Hey there, good evening. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is Bronx Dead's program where we talk to reporters and writers and editors and journalists, people who put stuff out in the Bronx so you can get an idea who they are and uh, maybe what uh, makes them tick a little bit. And um, this evening, we're going to do that in just a moment with um, one of the new reporters at the Bronx Times. In our second segment, we're going to talk to a teaching artist who has a, um, a, a whole thing going on at the Bronx Library Center. But for right now, let's say a good evening to Emily Swanson. She's a reporter at the Bronx Times, a recent graduate of the CUNY Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism. Nice to see you, Emily. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, so uh, as I understand, and it does say on the website, you're from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. What brings you to the Bronx? Yeah. It's not like we're next door. It's not like you were in Jersey and then said, hey, I think I'll be in the Bronx. Right. Yeah. Um, well, some weird part of me always wanted to move to New York. Um, and um, well, you don't have to sell me on that concept. I promise <laughs> you. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I um, somewhere along the way, I decided I wanted to go to journalism school and decided that the best place to do that would be in New York. Um, so, yeah, I, I happened to like apply to journalism school, had no journalism experience. I was actually a chef before and also a high school English teacher for a very long time. So, so it was sort of a weird and winding path, but now I'm here. I, I live in the Bronx. I'm reporting in the Bronx, and it's great. I love it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we believe that, that it's somewhat undiscovered territory, and I always talk to a lot of reporters, and any reporter that comes here, they're like, wow, there's so much stuff here to talk <laughs> about. Um, what was it that made you say, instead of a high school teacher, and um, what did you say you were a chef, what made <laughs> yeah. you say, I want to be in journalism? Um, I think... I think after my, my career as a chef lasted about nine years, it was pretty lengthy and I was a teacher for 11 years. And at that point it was like, I wanted to get back into something that was, that seemed more public service oriented. Um, and that's, you know, a really big part of how I see journalism is as, as a service to the public, as um, somebody who, you know, engages with the community and, um, yeah, I, I guess I finally became ready to do that. <laughs> and and um, la last question, and I love talking to people um, who come here to do journalism from elsewhere. Um, wh what are your impressions of uh, of the Bronx? I understand you live in uh, Port Morris, so that's the mm -hmm. southernmost part of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. um, many people are concerned of the gentrification down there. But just what's your own uh, in a personal impression of what you've seen? Um, God, I really, I instantly loved the Bronx. Um, I started really? reporting there right my first semester of school and it just seemed so great. It seemed like, yeah, it seemed like there weren't enough people doing stories here, um, that there was so much to be to be found. I found the people to be really amazing too. Um, everyone, almost everyone has, has been extremely receptive to somebody coming in from nowhere, you know, knowing nothing. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, I've really found the Bronx to be exciting. Um, yeah, kind of untapped kind of a, a hidden hidden gem. Um, and yeah, the, the people are great. And yeah, hey, you know, listen, I, I, I want to get into some specifics about what you've written about. Uh, it, I love hearing that because it's what I believe. Um, I've been doing this for 30 years, if it's hard to hard to imagine. Um, every everybody, everybody has a story. And it's an interesting story that would make for a news story for you, for me, for anybody else. Anyway, let's really um, talk about this article um, because I think it's so important and I don't know if people understand what the mayor's city of yes means. You found that there is mixed support for it. I was shocked from your article to find that uh, a couple of community boards voted no for the concept. And a couple of Bronx community boards voted yes. So what do, what do you think? Um, tell us what you learned about this mayor's idea of the city of yes. Yeah, well, um, so city of yes is really three sets of policies. Um, and they're all big. They're all major things that New Yorkers will really feel and see. Um, one policy, one set of policies is about housing. Um, one is about carbon neutrality and environmental protection. And then the one that was mainly focused on in the article was economic development, um, specifically rezoning, which has not been updated in the city for a very long time. That that was really um, interesting to me, which um, you, you you know you reported that they hadn't uh, the zoning changes had not happened since 1961, and you can do the math and figure out how many years 
it goes. And one, one of the things which you wrote about, uh, current zoning allows live music in any bar or restaurant, but in some areas, it doesn't allow you to dance to the music. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not a very Bronx thing, I have to tell you. <laughs> um, uh, and so now the borough president has come out for it with some um, reservations. Maybe we ought to start there. Uh, what does what is, what is, uh, Vanessa Gibson think? Yeah, so the borough president is mostly supportive of this um, of this set of economic policies. Um, she did put in some caveats, um, a little concern about um, like things like safety with um, with like using more utilizing more upper floors of buildings and having like residential and commercial right right next to each other. Um, there, so there were some um, kind of like warnings that she tossed in there. Also about um, increasing the availability um, availability of in home businesses, you know, businesses that people are allowed to run out of their homes. She says, of course, some people could do that in a problematic way. It, it, you know, it could go wrong in some cases, but in most cases, most people would be doing it with good intentions and, and in good faith. So, so yeah, she's mostly been supportive of this um, economic policy. But pe people are concerned of what, I, what I've heard uh, most recently, the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality expressed concern that if you open up residential areas and say you can have businesses everywhere, you could have somebody wanting to open a business that's out of context for what has been a residential neighborhood, as much as we all, including the borough president, wants to support economic development, right? I mean, so th this is the, the balance of the two. Right, right. Of course, it's it's all going to come down to how how is it done, and how are we going to kind of safeguard the things that are going to be allowed if if this policy goes through. Um, you know, it 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 could be some big changes, and so with that, you'll have to. Uh, the borough president pointed out in her recommendation that, like, with these kind of big changes, you also have to have increased enforcement. You have to be able to hold people accountable for doing things responsibly. So the, there is a hearing now, by the time this airs, the hearing will be done. It's on January uh, 24th, I, uh, as I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're actually shooting this before uh, the hearing. I, I will tell you this from a personal point of view, there is a plot of land that's being sold to a foreign developer and it's getting larger and um, you know the plot of land of availability. And there's great concern that the city of Yes is kind of a note to developers have it your way. You know, we'll change the zoning if you need it. Um, we won't require you to um, include parking in in what what you develop. Which, of course, in, in frankly, in my neighborhood, which is the neighborhood you're seeing back there, uh, that would be quite problematic. Mm -hmm. So, so again, that's the balance. We need housing. We need economic development, but it's got to be done right. Yep. Yep. That's that's a big. It's a big concern. Um, mm -hmm. And this, it's a pretty. Yeah, it could be some pretty big changes. And so what what gets what gets um by the way, every time I do that, that's what the technology oh. puts a <laughs> puts a thumbs up up there. Um what what um uh you know gets me is to me you need a community plan regardless of you know this building or that building or any building. You need to really look at the community and you know, I think the concern is the city of yes except everything. People in the East Bronx are going to be concerned because it's going to allow people to open up their backyards to create housing and stuff like that. You're really stuffing a lot of people in uh, in neighborhoods. What's your sense in the city council? Do you have a sense yet about what um, the city council members now? Of course, that's going to include all over the city, and we're talking about the Bronx, but do you have a sense about that? You know, I honestly, I don't really yet. Um, I, I think like at this point, um, what I've mainly been following is like the community boards starting to weigh in and, you know, perhaps differing amongst themselves and differing from the borough president at times. Um, so, so yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of where I've been focusing at this point. Um, so is to see how, how uh, council members, you know, uh, their their point of view on it of course again you even if you get unanimity of bronx council members there's still brooklyn queens manhattan and staten island which um will um uh, you know 
tell the story in the long run. Uh, I want to ask you about another story that you um, did and a little while back, um, and that was about the Allerton street vendors. Mm -hmm. um, this was fascinating to me. We have a lot of places, uh, most in, immediate comes to mind uh, along uh, the Kingsbridge Armory, where there are numerous street vendors who come out there routinely or every day mm -hmm. and sell stuff. What's going on on Allerton Avenue that um, makes it so difficult, I think, for everybody? Oh, it's it's a hot mess. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a busy area with, with so much foot traffic and, and traffic from yeah. right by the train. Um, and there, yeah, there's a lot of vendors there. Some of them have been around for decades in the neighborhood. Um, and they it's pretty much it pretty much is becoming clear that they're going to keep doing what they're doing you know even though sanitation comes by and like busts them all the time um these vendors keep setting back up they even <laughs> a lot of them even um keep like backup merchandise like right there waiting in case stuff you mean in case stuff they gets confiscated kind of <laughs> um, they, they just are not going anywhere and um the system itself is so confusing and um just a jumbled so, so so I'm going to give you both sides. Number one, at least according to what you reported, uh, vendors are having a problem getting licensed or there's something gets screwed up with a license somewhere so that they don't have the paperwork on site if they get challenged or whatever. And then on, um, uh, on the other side, uh, the level of enforcement, even if they do, as you said, confiscate the goods, they're going to be back tomorrow. And listen, we don't want to start locking people up who are, you know, especially we have many migrants. I mean, we know what the story is with many people who just need to do this. Uh, so um, what, what, what is the, um, the, the play out for this? It, it's really to straighten up the, um, the system, I guess, the Department of um, Services. Is that who, who does it? Um, well, the Department DSNY. of Labor and Worker Protection issues the licenses, but DSNY does enforcement. And so, like, depending on whether it's general vending or food vending, there can be as many as, like, six or seven different agencies involved. And it, it's it's very confusing and very restricted. And that's why I was surprised to find that even somebody who is a disabled veteran was was having trouble with this situation because that group is supposed to be kind of the the easiest in there. Yeah, you, you want to, we want to protect those folks. Listen, right. uh, Emily Swanson, your first uh, appearance uh, here on the Bronx buzz. We are thrilled to have you. We're thrilled to have you reporting uh, in the borough of the Bronx. You certainly seem like you are the, just the right person because you care about our communities. You, un, you, from the outside, you're saying, wait a minute, what is going on here? And that's what, uh, that's what we need. Yeah, thank you so much. That's really nice. It's really um, a joy to have you, and I can guarantee you keep writing. We'll have you back, too. Great. I'd love to. So uh, we're going to take a short break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to go to uh, an artist who's going to be showing at uh, the Bronx Library Center. Don't go away.